Hey, do you all struggle with trust and boundaries when it comes to your romantic relationships? It could even be family. It could, it could even be work. But do you struggle with boundaries in your relationships? If, if you do or you have trust issues, today's, today's Heart to Heart with Dr. Tart is going to be just for you. It's going to be just for you. I've come up with a list of things. I've come up with a list of things that you can do that will absolutely work, that will absolutely work, right? To help you to feel better about setting trust and boundaries. Because I know, I believe I know what you want, right? You want to be able to get into healthy relationships that are not only good for you, but good to you. All right, good for you and to you. But if you could just overcome these trust issues, if you could just overcome this past betrayal, if you could just overcome this past hurt, you be in a good space. All right, if, if that's you, all right, if that's you, let me know because we're going to talk about it today. I'm going to give you some very practical, I'm going to, you know, more than practical, I'm going to give you some psychological tools and techniques that you can use because I love you and I care for you. And this is a passion of mine so that you can have effective relationships that are healthy so you can get towards marriage you can get to that relationship and you can stop having to to um get stuck and the stuff from the past in your life that keeps you stuck are y'all ready all right are y'all ready all right so let's do it i see y'all saying y'all are ready i see y'all coming from oklahoma city i see y'all are coming in already with your questions about childhood trauma you're right because this generalizes not only from relationships but also into our family members. All right, so let's talk about it, all right? Because I hear y'all's feedback. I hear y'all's feedback, all right? I see you, Miss Weary. I see you, Penelope. I see you, Miss Taylor. I see you, Miss Foster. I see you, Pastor Pamela. I see I see y'all. I'm excited about it. All right, so let's do this, all right? So, so number one, all right, let's talk about difficulty in trusting after past betrayals. How many of you ever been betrayed before? Raise your hand. All right. Raise your hand. Right. We've been betrayed before. Right. We've been betrayed before. But have you ever do you have a do you do you know how to actually rebuild after? Do you know how to rebuild after trials and tribulations? Do you know how to build after having your heart broken? Have you had your heart absolutely broken, 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 broken? Have you been? There? Yeah. Y'all are raising your hand and we've been there. All right. So let me let me tell you about this study all right so there was a study done um in psychology today this is where the study was listed right and they they did this study on how women found love after heartbreak now it was only a study that focused on women did not focus on men but i think that it applies right and i noticed that men men do this right all the time right i noticed like man this is something that men do after they're hurt and it's amazing that women learned about it but they asked them they said you know how did you deal with devastating heartbreak and move into a committed relationship or marriage? What was your mindset? And each one of the uh, each one of the women in the study had the the uh, the common experience of dealing with devastating heartbreak. I mean, devastating heartbreak to the point where they said that they just would not love again. Right? They would just not do it again. If they, if if love means that type of pain. They just said they weren't going to do it again. And they ended up getting married or in a relationship. And they said, how? All right. And here's what happened with the women. They said, one, they tried to be single, but it didn't work for them. So they found themselves in this dilemma. Like, you know, I do not want to get hurt by Tyrone again, but I'm just not built to be alone. I don't like being alone outside of a romantic relationship. I don't want to do it. I'm actually sad because I'm lonely outside of a relationship. And then I was sad when I was in this toxic relationship. I got my heart broken. And so what they did, I want to share with you. And it's called gradual rebuilding right there. Gradual rebuilding of trust. And what they said was, all right, they're going to put that dating profile out there. They're going to get back out there on the dating scene, whatever their style was. But they purposely held back some of their feelings. And what they said was, all right, I, if a man likes me, I'm going to like him a percentage of what he likes me back until I'm sure that this brother won't hurt me. All right. So for instance, if this brother is feeling me uh, at a five of that first date, 
I'm going to like him at a three. Now, this isn't game playing. This isn't manipulation. They had just had the experience of being all in, loving someone, only to find out that they weren't who they were, who they thought they were, or something happened or some issue and their heart got broken. And so they said to avoid that, I'm simply going to do gradual rebuilding. I'm not going to go head over heels for anyone. I'm going to be one or two steps behind them. Right. And so they said, when a guy likes me at a seven, I'm going to like him at a five. When he likes me at a 10 and says, I love you, I'm going to say, I like you. And then if he moves like a 10 and he's actually able to be a man of his word and his actions and his words line up over a serious time, I'm going to be all in at a 10. So they did something ingenious. They were able to date while still staying safe, but they were not emotionally unavailable. So they didn't just quit on relationships. Y'all get what I'm saying? They said, let me do the next best thing, which is called gradual rebuilding. Let me do this slowly. All right. And you know who does that? You know who does that? All right. The bank. The bank does that. Right. So when you go in, how many of you ever try to borrow money from the bank? Probably all of us can raise our hand. Right. We need to borrow money for the bank. We need to do business with the bank. First thing the bank asks for, let me know, people. What does the bank ask for? What do they do? How do they how do they establish whether you're trustworthy or not? Come on, y'all type it in the chat. What do they do? What do they do? Right. They ask for your credit. And not only do they not trust your credit score when you say it, they pull your credit almost immediately. Thank you, Tangie. They pull your credit. Penelope's right. Not only do they look for your credit, they also look for your proof of funds. They look for your finance. They want to see what you have in the bank as collateral so that you can pay them back. And they also want to look at your history of paying bills back prior to dealing with the bank. And they give you a score, y'all. All right. Now, we're talking about difficulty trusting after betrayal. And what I want to throw away for those of you who identify with those women, whether you're a man or a woman, you've been hurt before but you just refuse or you don't want to let him or her ruin your trust for men or women for the rest of your life, here is your happy medium. You don't have to be lonely and safe. And then you don't have to just say, you know, I'm going back out there with the same way and get my heart broken for a second time. No, no, Uh, I'm not going to treat my people like that. We're not going to treat we're not, no, Dr. Tart not going to do that to you. So what, what we're going to do is going to act like the bank. You're going to give everyone a score. And based on that score, it's how they deal with you. So if you have a seven, 800 credit, they give you money at a low rate. Why? Because you can go anywhere else and get a loan. So they're going to treat you real nice. They're going to talk to you nice, right? And then number two, what do they do? All right. Maybe maybe you have a six, low, low six you're in the high fives and they say you generally pay your bills. So we're going to give you a higher, we're going to give you a higher interest rate. All right. And if you come in in the fours, you know, you come in in the fours, low fives, they're like, look, no, 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 no. We can't do business with you. We cannot do business with you, but we won't not date you forever. We won't not do this. Come back in with a different credit score later and we'll deal with you where you presently are. All right. Thank you, Penelope, for buying a super sticker. I appreciate you. are always consistent in, in doing things. I, I appreciate it. Right. So listen, how do you apply this? Someone tell me, how do you apply this to your personal life? Right. What you do is that you're watching a brother or sister. You're listening. You're not taking them for granted on their relationships. I want to know why your past relationships ended. All right. And I want to do some research. I'm going to look and see as much as I can find out. I'm going to listen. All right. And I'm going to look for clues. If you cut off your last um, uh, husband from the kids, you might cut me off from the kids unless he was toxic. You know, sometimes you do have to cut people off who are struggling with alcohol and drugs and manipulation. Sometimes you do have to cut them off because they're toxic. Right. And they can't be around the kids. Right. But I'm talking about if, if you just do this for power and control, that's going to lower your credit score. If you're someone that doesn't talk glowingly about your past relationships or your mother, I'm going to have to give you a lower credit score, right? Because that's saying you don't have a track record for getting along with women. Now, I'm not saying that uh, a, a brother whose mother has some mental health issues or some narcissistic, narcissistic ways, uh, characters or traits or... Um, just did not have the luck of the draw with a mom who's available is uh, is is damaged because I'm not saying I think that's insulting 
and it's disrespectful. I'm just simply saying that a man that is not able to resolve issues, you know, with the women in his life and have, has had problems with women, you might want to take a second look and see what it is. Does he pick the wrong woman or, or, or is he the issue? At least needs to be a value. Are y'all getting it? Do y'all see where I'm going? So what we're doing is we're looking. We're looking to see if you consider it. We're looking to see if your actions and your words align before I like you. Thank you, Push Radio. Do your words and actions align? When you say you consider it and we go to the movies and I say I want to see a rom-com and you want to see an action movie, what do you do? Do you throw a temper tantrum because you want to go see Bruce Willis? You you, you, you want to go see um, who, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Right. I should say Will Smith, but he's not doing action movies these days, you know. So uh, do, do you want to I mean, what do you what do you want? What do you want? And, and if he says, no, nah, we can go see the rom-com or we can rock, paper, scissors, shoot, or we can go see both. Or we can ask each other who really wants to see the movie more and go with the person who wants to see it more. And we do it fairly. Then you're good. Then you are good. You are in a good space. Hey, Jasmine, I see y'all, right? I appreciate y'all coming in, right? All right, so, so y'all get it? All right, so you build trust like a bank. That So, so that's number one. So gradual rebuilding, that's going to be your first strategy in difficulty and trusting after past betrayals. Because again, I want you to master trust and boundaries. I want you to win in relationships. And you don't have to lose just because you have been hurt. Now, remember, all right, if you're watching this, um on youtube you're in the right place if not make sure you watch the replay or if you want to finish this when you're off your lunch hour whenever you're morning go to youtube and watch the rest and tell people make sure when you get there i need you to subscribe and click that notification bell so you can get notifications right to your phone all right so let's go into number two all right Number two, thank you for Penelope for putting that in, gradual rebuilding, right? People go back and look at this, and they appreciate the notes that you're taking, and other people can benefit. All right, number two. All right, number two. So after we do uh, gradual rebuilding, all right, let's 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 talk about feeling smothered by a partner's overprotectedness. Have you ever been in a relationship, and you just feel overprotected or are just crowded by someone? You know, like, like, like you cannot move, like... Like you belong to them. It's okay for you to be, I'm your man, I'm your king, I'm your queen, I'm your boo thing, I'm your babe, whatever, whatever you say, right? But I didn't know I was your possession. I didn't know that you possessed me. I didn't know that you owned me. I didn't know that I couldn't watch movies without you. I didn't know I couldn't go to the store without you. I didn't know that I had to FaceTime or you track my location. All this, how many of y'all like, look, I ain't signed up for all that, brother and sister. All right. But now you're already in it. You're emotionally, you're emotionally caught up. You didn't know this. Because like a lot of us would not enter into these relationships if people advertise this. But let's keep it real. People date with their representative sometimes. And they're right, Gwendolyn. Don't they date with their representative? All right. That happens. And so what we want to do, this is your second strategy. So this is a strategy for dealing with feeling smothered. Or, or someone's overprotected to the point where they're possessive. You want to establish personal space. You want to establish personal space. All right. So let's talk about what to do in the very beginning. The first thing is that we need a robust social life. Robust social life. Right. I love that word robust. Right. It's a lot. It means it's a lot. Right. It's an abundance. Right. So when you have a social life and you have a life before you date, it is harder for someone to be controlling or overly possessive or smothering of you. Because when you come in, you say, hey, look, this is my schedule. I do yoga on Tuesday nights. I get with my girlfriends for our accountability meetings on Wednesdays. If you're a guy, look, I get together and we do Bible study with just the bros on Thursday. All right. I spend time with my family. I, I focus on my work. I'm also focused on some entrepreneurial ventures. I'm going to a couple of masterminds. Right. I like to spend some time with myself and just chill and watch some different movies or, or write books, whatever you do. See, if you have a robust social life before you date, it's harder for that person to become your life where we open ourselves up to be controlled uh, in advance. If we have the bad luck of the draw of attracting or dating someone who's insecure 
are controlling is that we don't have much of a life. And so our life becomes their life. Right. And so they start shaping our life because we don't have anything on paper to help give us structure and say, no, I don't want to give up my spin class. I like the spin class. It's a lot of fun. Right. The instructor plays uh, this trap music that makes me just ride and I lose so many calories. And it's just the, the communal feel. Oh, no, nah, you ruining my spa time. I have to do my spa time because I have a stressful job. And the way my blood pressure set up, I need my blood pressure to be low. So I need it. So I can't I can't always go on Saturdays. That's my spa time. All right. Now. I know y'all saying, all right, that's that's not enough, right? So so uh, we have that set up. Or I can set that up. But tell me what to do now that I'm in it. I'm already with this brother. I'm already with this sister. And I did not have this life uh, set up. Or they just were a perpetual line stepper. And they trying to just push my life away. And then they use leaving a manipulation. All right, so here's what we want to do. All right, this is going to be real. This is going to be real. All right, it's really the ho- real deal. Holy field. Right. Listen, I need you to behave differently. All right. Men especially do not listen to words. Uh, There are some women who just do not believe, who've never been told no, who have a significant amount of power. They have a certain uh, je ne sais quoi. Uh, They have it. And sometimes in a negative way, they use it against you. They know how to push your buttons. They know how to persuade. All right. So if you have that, you're going to have to move differently. All right. So think about dancing. If you're dancing, you're complaining about the song. You're still dancing to uh, their song. Right. What's the best way to get them to change if you cannot control their behavior? Stop dancing or dance a different way. All right, you have to dance a different way. So let me give you some practical advice. So if he is controlling, right, and he calls, stop picking up, right? Don't pick up. Now, I, I, if, if those of you that are like in domestic violence situations and that's dangerous, you need to call like the hotline to, to give you advice. But I'm talking about this is just a, a controlling, insecure brother or sister for their own trauma past, right? Stop picking up the phone. See, every time you pick up the phone, right, 14 times, five times, he asks where you are, what time you come. You already said I'll be back in around one or two. I'll be back in around 11. I'll be back around four, right, 4 p.m. I'm not talking four in the morning, but you can do what you want to do. All right? And then he's texting you at three. He's texting you at two. I, I said four. Don't pick up the phone. What that does say is that I'm going to answer and be at your beck and call, which then endorses the behavior, right, and says to do it again. Right. It reinforces the behavior you're trying to make extinct. And this is psychological talk. We're trying to extinguish the behavior of them being controlling. Right, family? Christine, you get it. We're trying with Sylvia. You get it. We're trying to extinguish them checking on you all the time. Why are we picking up? We pick up at 345 and say, hey, I'm on the way home. We text. I'm on the way home. Right. We don't respond to any of the messages. Why do you pick up? What was going on? That's different if it's an emergency, right? It's different, right? But what we're what we're what we're not going to do, what we're not going to do is allow the controlling person to then cause you to change how you move, right? So if they call fourteen times, that means you answer fourteen times. Uh uh-uh. uh So if they want to sh- track your location, that means that you have your phone op- open to be tracked. Right. That means that if they don't want you talking to other men and women as platonic. You you disassociate yourself with your friends and family who you've known for your whole life that actually give you the balance to be able to set boundaries in relationships because he's not she's not your whole attention. Right. And there will be some people that says, hey, I'm everything. I'm numero uno. You need to stop what you're doing, your work, your job. I see. I see one of my homies up here is a big time college athlete. You know, he can't stop his training. You know, shout out to you, D.C., right? Uh, he can't stop his training at one of the most competitive schools because his girl wants him to talk to her every single time she's in crisis. Right. You know what I'm saying? Hey, there's counseling services right across the street. Hey, I can I can I look at the back of your insurance card. It's this thing called member services. You call it. They'll hook you up with therapists. They, they'll call. You know, if it's, it's doing certain hours, they'll link you up with a provider. 
You get what I'm saying? I can't do that. I can't be your mama. I can't be your daddy. I can't be the crisis hotline. All right, I'm sorry you don't have any friends, but maybe you should develop some friends instead of being jealous of mine and trying to blow up my spot just because I want to be social with someone other than you. And I'm going to want to do that even when I'm married. I'm going to watch the game with the bros. I'm going to want to go to a vision party with the girls, right? I'm going to want to do my New Year's resolutions with the sister tribe. Y'all get what I'm saying? All right, so change your behavior and just, just don't move. That's what the bank, that's what the uh, phone company does. You don't pay your bill, they cut it off. They change the behavior. You say, I'm going to pay you, promise to pay. I'm a, I'm a, your name comes, becomes I'm a, I'm going to pay. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, and they're going to say, all right, I'm a, we cutting the bill off, right? They change their behavior. And then what do you do? You change your behavior to call and say, I need my phone back on. You mess with my money. I can't cash app. I can't get cashed up. You know, I, I can't go live. I can't watch Dr. Tart on YouTube. I can't go on Instagram live. You can't, you know, no. And then you pay the restore fee, right? So sometimes we talk when really we need to be walking. We need to be walking. You can't make me talk to you, right? You can't make me pick up the phone, right? Your anxiety is not my anxiety. I'm not worried about me cheating. That's your ex, not me. I can be out and have a good time. And I'm not seven. I don't need to check in every 45 minutes because of you, brother. I'm sorry. So when I go out, unless it's an emergency, I'm not going to pick out, pick up the phone. I'm with my friends. All right. Number three. All right. What about uh, struggling? Let's, 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 let's flip this a little bit. What about struggling with your own jealousy and insecurity? Can I keep it real? And I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk to my brothers, right? There are a lot of men out there who are insecure. There are a lot of sisters out there who are insecure. You just don't know what you have. Other people seem to be able to have a, have a better gauge of who you are than you do. And that's kind of normal, right? Because a lot of times we do require and, and do benefit from validation from others. But when it, when it results in like jealousy or insecurity, you're doing yourself a disservice, right? You can really sabotage uh, relationships. Thank you, Jesse, for the for the kind words. Right? Have y'all ever done that? And, and let's be real, everyone's done it, right? Uh, jealousy is a normal emotion, right? It's normal. It's basically saying that person has something I feel I should have, right? And you can even have jealousy inside of your own relationship. Like, how is he killing it in business, and we're in the same profession, and I'm not killing it? All right, how is she making more money than I am? And I'm her husband supposed to protect and provide over her from a traditional viewpoint. Oh, I'm, I'm jealous of her, right? So I'm going to start trying to poo-poo on her parade simply because I'm no, that's the wrong way. What we want to do is we want to actually redirect that and say, all right, how can I get what I need so that I'm not jealous? So what we do, so the, so the recipe is number three for dealing with struggle, for, for struggling with jealousy and insecurity, all right, is reflect self-reflection and assurance self-reflection and assurance, right? Because jealousy and insecurity come because our focus is more on another person than on ourself. Look what he has. Look what she has. Look what he's doing. Look what she's doing versus focusing on what do I have and how do I level up to get the things that I want, all right? So self-reflection. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to create a list of attributes that, that make you feel confident. All right. I want you to treat you like another person. I know y'all saying, man, this is some psychological weird stuff. No, but I want you to be the person that you're jealous of. Oh, man, that was a bar right there. That was a bar. Tell Drake I'm coming from him. You know, my daughter loves Drake and I always get on to it. I just don't know why. Right. I, is that, hey, I might be jealous of Drake. Y'all. Oh, I might have been exposed. All right. Might have been exposed. All right. So when we look at it, you need to be the person that you're jealous of. So if we can switch it and use it to your advantage. Be the person that you're jealous of. Like, man, I'm jealous that, that you always show up in relationships with positivity. I'm jealous that even though you get hurt, you step up and you just keep a man. You keep men coming back. You, you let, you know, Taiwan and Tyrone hurt you, but you don't let that stop you from Russell. You don't let that stop you from Barack. You don't let that stop you from LeBron. You don't let that stop you from Bronny James. My daughter loves Bronny James, y'all. All right. So what, what I'm saying is you don't let that. Girl, you know what you, you're doing? You, you own companies. You're at work dealing with toxic 
masculinity you at work dealing with jealous folks you're dealing with racism right you're dealing with just dysfunctional people get guess what you still a rock star your division is still killing it as a man you be like look yeah i've been hurt tasha used me uh, my, my mom was inconsistent with me right last ex was was was, was dealing with her uh ex while dealing with me and and you heal from that you go to counseling and then you go in and say you know what i'm gonna be okay dating oprah i'm gonna be okay dating Beyonce. I'm going to be okay dating Michelle, dating Savannah. Y'all get what I'm saying? I'm going to move forward. I'm not going to let my past dictate my... I, I, I like what I bring to the table. Each one of you should know your unique selling point. All right? We talk. We do need to sell ourselves to ourselves first, right? So my selling point in relationships... All right, so academically, my selling point is I'm an avid learner. I can learn faster than probably 95% of people. I hope that's accurate, right? But when I took my IQ test, it was basically saying I learn very quickly. I'm able to consume large amounts of information in a short amount of time and be able to teach it, all right? A lot of that is because of how I study, all right? I, I don't study the same uh, as everyone else, right? But my my, my superpower in relation, so when I go in academically, it doesn't matter what I get initially. The beginning is not the end for me. I'm going to trend upwards, right? I'm going to be the team that starts slowly, right? But then I'm going to get there and I'm going to be the champs, right? When it comes to relationships, my superpower, if you cannot tell, I'm being humble, but I have to be, is conversation. There's no woman who's ever dated me that said I did not give good conversation. We going to talk. Oh, we going to talk. If I'm in a relationship with you, we going to talk on a regular basis. You probably going to say, brother, shut up talking about my life. Brother, stop going so deep into my dreams and aspirations. Brother, stop trying to help me to feel supported with the loss of my cousin. Brother, stop. You, 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 I, I, we going to converse. We're going to achieve some goals. You're going to get some good morning texts and videos and and sayings and scriptures about how we gonna do how you can overcome you're gonna get that from me you you're gonna be like bro stop you doing too much so i know that so when i come into a relationship i know if you date me you're gonna be supported and you're gonna get some combo you're not gonna be on the phone like huh huh what you doing what you doing what you do i'm gonna be asking I'm, we're gonna go multiple layers i'm gonna know all about your ex Right. I don't know all about your dreams and ambitions so much. So I can tell people I know exactly what she wants to do from now until the time she retired. All right. Y'all get it. All right. Penelope says she loves great conversationalists. All right. So that's going to help you to actually feel more secure because you know what you bring to the table. So since I like to make this interactive, why don't you write in the chat or even in the privacy of your own home or office or car, wherever you're watching this, what's your superpower? What do you what do you bring that's unique? to a relationship that makes you feel secure. Christine, thank you for the super sticky, y'all. I appreciate it. Thank y'all for the badges, right? I appreciate y'all always uh, uh, supporting, right? You don't have to do that, but I do appreciate it, right? So when we start looking at it, what do you do? All right, I know y'all saying, I don't know, that's the problem. I don't know what my superpower is. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to ask five people close to you. Ask five people close to you. Just put it in a text right now. Text them and say, hey, you know, uh, I'm, uh, I met this crazy psychologist online, a life coach, right? And he asked me to do this exercise. And what would you say my five superpowers are? And just kind of explain why they're superpowers, right? All right. Bam. And then so that so that way you can see, because a lot of times we can't see our own talents. We need other people uh, to, to, to see them, right? And then the next thing I want you to do is I want you to confidently and clearly state what you bring to the table. Now, I know, ladies, you just had a visceral reaction, right? A visceral reaction, like, oh, here we go. Another man talking about what you bring to the table, right? But you need to know, right? Men, you need to know what you bring to the dinner table, the marital table, the business table, the, the financial table. What do you bring to the table that you're proud of? That way you can see yourself. Sometimes, especially believers, sometimes we can be so humble that we don't have a, a, a what's called healthy entitlement. Healthy entitlement is like, I know who I am. I'm going to give all honor and glory to God for blessing me with the skills and the work ethic and the opportunities. But I know what I'm coming with. 
right? I know what I'm bringing to the table. I know I'm bringing conversation. Uh, Y'all know me, you know, I I know I'm bringing hair, right? I I know I'm bringing someone that's going to uh, keep their their physical body in shape. I know I'm gonna bring a supporter. I know I'm bringing a believer. I, I know I'm bringing someone enthusiastic. I know I'm bringing someone resilient. I know I'm bringing someone who's a quick learner. Me, like if I messed up with you, you're not gonna have to tell me. I'm gonna be reading books and figuring out and doing self reflection on the phone. Like why did I do that? And going deep with myself, or, or employing counselors or whatever I need to do to be better. Right. So if you're in a relationship with me, it ain't going to be no taking your ring off. It, it, it's not going to be quitting. All right. We're going we're gonna to have multiple iterations. We're going to have a five point plan on how we're going to get our relationship together. What I'm going to do and what you're going to do. Right. You feel me? So I know I bring that to the table. How many of y'all want that in your relationship? Someone who can fight, someone that's going to be resilient, someone who can 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 iterate, someone who can mutate. Um, adapt, right? You know, to just change and morph into something different to match what the relationship needs. Zevlon, can you deal with that? LaFrance, can you deal with that? Veronica, can you deal with that? You know, Melody, can you deal with that? Strand, can you deal with that? Alicia, can you deal with that? Kyrie, can you deal with that? Uh, Dr. Gadsden, can you do it? You know, she's clowning about my hair. That's my buddy. All right. So, so, so when we look at it, y'all, when we look at it, when you're able to do that and spend that time, can you see how you're going to show up to a relationship a lot more confident? Can you see how you're actually able to deal with your own jealousy and insecurity because now you've turned it on you and be like, I'm jealous of me, All right? I'm proud of what I've done and I'm a little bit more secure about why you stay with me because where are you going to find another me, All right? I don't mean that in a cocky way, but like, I mean, in a healthy entitlement way, like that's a lot to lose. I do realize that's a lot to lose. It's not going to be easy for my wife to replace me. And it's not going to be easy, if not all, uh, absolutely impossible for me to replace my wife. That's a lot to lose. I have friends. That's a lot to lose. All right. And that's how you get over jealousy and insecurity. You focus on, on, on building yourself up so that you're happy with yourself. All right. So let's keep this train moving. All right. So 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 number four, y'all, and y'all are just joining me. We're talking about mastering trust and boundaries. I'm giving y'all a guide for how to win in relationships. All right. So let, let me see this. I just saw a comment come through. Right. It says I'm great at identifying gifts and talents and, and needs and nurturing and developing things and people. I'm also a great caretaker and gifted in ideation and problem solving. Y'all, that's Corey. That's Corey saying that, y'all. I'm giving her a shout out, right? She's saying that. Hey, cuz. I see my cuz on here from Cleveland, right? Well, you know, hailing from Cleveland, right? Hey, Adriana. Hey, Andrea. So I see y'all. So so it says, um, you know, uh, LaFrance is saying his best his best one is uh, calmness and empathy. Y'all, y'all are part of the show when y'all rocking with me, right? Uh, y'all are part of the show. Nadine says, my, my superpower is is kindness and joy. Who doesn't need that? Who doesn't need that in their life? Peace, happiness, motivation, healing, right? We need that, right? So if you know your superpower and y'all are going to know it because you're going to ask these five people, then you're going to be able to show up in a way where you feel way more secure in relationships. And and, and why is that important? Because when you're confident in you, then your partner is going to be confident in you. See, if I have self-doubt, how can you be sure that I'm the one? See, I create that, right? If if, if I emit self-doubt, and you can tell people who have self-doubt, right? If I emit that self-doubt, how can you be certain when I'm not certain of myself? Where is that supposed to That's impossible. How can you be certain I'm going to get it done and I'm not sure of myself, right? Now, now people will initially believe in you, but the more you doubt yourself, they're going to be like, well, maybe they're on to something because they seem just convinced and convicted that there's something wrong with them. So maybe I should pay attention. Maybe the fact that she's calling me when I'm out says she doesn't think that she's the baddest woman in the world. Maybe there are badder women in the world. Maybe I should look around this lounge or this business function. My man coming around, your man coming around all the time when you're talking to guys. Well, maybe these guys are a threat to him. Why would he come around if they're not a threat, right? So when I say that superpower is caring, sharing, and, and, and loving, I'm a giver, 
right? That's Adriana, y'all. Y'all get it? I mean, y'all get it. Y'all get it. All right, someone said I just called out their boss, right? Oh, you said I just locked up my boss. Lord have mercy. All right, so, so uh, prayers for you. We don't want you to be in any dangerous situation. Sharifa says my superpowers are kindness. Uh, closet comedian. Okay, you holding out on us. Low-key funny. All right, business strategy. And I can build an online business for someone in five minutes. Well, you need to DM me. Huh? DM me. I have a lot of business that need to be online. It need to be streamlined and systematized. All right. No, I have a coach for that, but I'm interested in what you're saying, Sharifa. All right. I was actually talking to my daughter last night about some 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 uh, business ventures. So we'll see if we can work out. All right. So oh, someone said they agree with my daughter about Drake. I'm not going to hate on Drake, y'all. I'm not going to. I just like to have fun. I just like to have fun with her about why my 17 year old daughter is listening to a 40 year old rapper. That's just funny. It's also ingenious how Drake has made himself relevant. Anyway, we're not going to digress. All right. Y'all get on me in the comments. Stop digressing. Right. All right. So what if your issue, all right, uh, what if your issue is, I have a list for y'all, all right? So yeah, all right, let me go a little bit faster. What if your issue is difficulty saying no and expressing discomfort uh, in relationships? Have, have any of y'all struggle with that? Because we're talking about overcoming, mastering trust and boundary issues, how to win in your love life. I'm giving you a list of the things that make us struggle with boundaries and struggle with trust. Struggle with trust. All right, I'm, I'm helping. So we're talking about what happens when you have difficulty saying no and expressing discomfort, expressing discomfort. Right. And, and as a matter of fact, if, if you all need if you all need um, just. You know, a, a course on setting boundaries, I did one, y'all. I actually did one. Right. Y'all can go to drchart.com backslash courses. Right. It's, it's just based on boundaries. And it's a mini course that actually helps you to set boundaries in your relationships so that you can have power in your relationships versus being a victim. I do a deep dive. Right. So y'all go to drchart.com backslash courses and, and scoop that up. Right. I think you're going to really be blessed by that. But let's talk about it right now. Let me give you kind of a mini version of that. So right now. All right. What you want to do is, is something called uh, exposure therapy. Right. So whenever you expose yourself to what you are afraid of, you actually generate more courage. Right. So what happens is you avoid saying no. And so you just stay uncomfortable saying no, because you're always avoiding saying no, because you don't want that conflict. But if you expose yourself to what you're afraid of. Right. And you say, I'm just going to say no and see what this brother and sister says. All right. And then they, they do what they do. And you say, all right, that wasn't so bad. That wasn't so scary. And if it is, you leave. Right. But otherwise, you realize I said no. Um, and then they accepted it, or at least if they didn't accept it. At least I didn't give away my time and I'm upset. But let me give you another technique. All right. I need you to uh, do what's called the delay technique, y'all. All right. So this is real talk. All right. I did a workshop for the Oklahoma City Thunder, right? I used to consult with them as a psychologist and they brought me in to do a very specific workshop which i really enjoyed right so shout out to the oklahoma city thunder family and they were like we need you to help these guys to say no to their families who are always asking them for money wow we i see someone uh all the way from france right uh, uh all the uh, I, i'm trying to think uh, I, I took i took four years of french and i'm blanking all right uh, but anyway, I, I see uh, Dawn is, is 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 tapping into this, you know, real time uh, from from France. As you can see, my French is Trey Mall, right? Parlez-vous français, Trey Mall, all right? It's terrible, right? I need I need to get back into that. Maybe when I go to the south of France, it'll come back. But but but, but the delay technique. So I taught I taught uh, the players something called the delay technique. Now it's super simple. All right, it's it, it's super simple. Oh my goodness, that's my that's my neighbor, y'all. I know exactly who that is. DM me. All right. Um, it's the delay technique. I'm trying. Y'all see, I'm ADD. Right, I go back. All right. So delay technique. So what it does, it looks like is that when someone asks you for money, and, and because when they get you on the phone, do they have you? Hey, I need five hundred dollars. And if you're making a million dollars as an athlete, how are you gonna say no to five hundred dollars? What you do is you delay and say, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me call you right back, man. You know what? Uh, my daughter's acting nut about to jump off the camera. Let me call you right back. All right. You say anything to get off the phone because what happens when you get off the phone? Your rational mind comes back. You're like, do I really want to loan this person $500? Yeah, I do. All right. Or I don't. Right. All right. Let me figure out what to say. 
All right. Another thing is to put a step, put a step in place. Right. Like, OK, my financial planner has all my money. I, the, my financial planner pays me a salary because I wasted so much money. It's what I told the athletes to say. I wasted so much money and I have to make this money. I am rich now, but I'm going to be rich all the way up until 80. Right. To my life expectancy. And I'm going to want to live the same way. So I'm going to have to make this $5 million a year stretch for 80 years. And I'm probably only going to play four, five, six, seven years. Everyone can't be LeBron. Right. So I need to make this work. So I'm working right now for the rest of my life. And I have kids and legacy. I got to take care of that. Right. You just put that delay in there. All right. So if you have difficulty, you know, saying no, use a delay technique so that you can get your mind right and then call back. But here's another another technique, y'all. I want you to employ an agent, All right? And I'm putting this out there as a believer. I pray that my agent is going to get a lot of work in 2023 and 2024 and 2025, right? And 2026, you know, all, I don't know when y'all gonna watch this years from now, but I hope my agent gets a lot of work because there's a lot of work when it comes to, to books and TV and opportunities, y'all. So I have an amazing, amazing agent you know, out in LA. And his job is to negotiate the best deal for me. So the television company will say, hey, we want to, we want to uh, book Dr. Tart for this. This is how much we want to pay. This is how much production credits we want to give him. This is how much royalty, um, so on and so forth, right? How much name recognition, whether he can mention his website. They can do that, right? All right. And then my agent's job is to come back and say, all right, well, we, we see, you know, having my client and this number works for you, but make it work for him. Make it work for him, right? Does he get to post this on his YouTube? Does he get to monetize this? Does he have a say so in how he's marketing? Is it marketing? Marketing? Does he have a say show? Say so in how the show goes? Is there going to be a season two? Does he get a step increase as the show is more popular? So, all right. So that agent. So what I need you to do is employ the agent in your own mind and start asking, how does this work for me? You can even do this in relationships. So I know you want me to cook, and I know you want me to clean because you're a traditional man. Uh, even though I am a business professional, right? And I work as much as you do. That's cool. I can get how you want that. That makes sense. I want that too, if I were you. But help this make sense for me. What am I getting out of this? So if I'm going to cook and clean after working a long day, bring bring home the proverbial bacon, just like you, what do I get? You'd be surprised. There are a lot of good people who don't realize that they're self-absorbed. You'd be like, man, I never thought about what you got. What you want? All right, yeah, I like a foot rub. I like for you to do the chores. I like for you to help the kids with homework. I like for you to buy the groceries. I like for you to put the dishes up. I like for you to cut the vegetables. I like I like for you to sit in the kitchen with me and entertain me. I like for you to pour me a glass of wine. I like for you to make sure that my car is set. I like for you to just um, make so much money I don't have to work so that I can cook and clean all day and be happy. <laughs> Y'all feel me? Y'all feel me? So when you have that agent, and sometimes you have to make yourself have that agent, like, how does that work for me? How does that work for me? Right? You're going to have to make this work for me so that I don't get taken advantage of. And so when you have more healthy entitlement, you have presence, right? And you're able to think of yourself because you have a habit of putting other people's needs first. Your agent is going to come to the rescue and be like, whoa, 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 wait. Wait, this needs to make sense for Frankie. This needs to make sense for uh for, for for Andrea. This this needs to make sense for Ronnie. This this needs to make sense for Nadine, y'all. Crit, it, it need to make sense for this. Just make it make sense for us, and and we can do a deal, y'all. I hope this is helpful, y'all. Right? If y'all are just joining in, you're popping. Watch the rest of this on YouTube. It'll be live right after we finish. Uh, forever, right? And so we're talking about just the things that trip us up. We're talking about mastering trust and boundary issues so you can win in your love life, all right? And I'm going through a number of issues for you all, right? All right, so let's deal with the next one. And then we're almost done, y'all. All right, partners lack of transparency. Mm. Have you ever been in a relationship with someone who just lies? They either lie by omission Right. I mean, they just don't, you know, you, you because you don't ask, they don't tell you that's lying by omission or they just flat out lie. 
they're just not transparent about who they are, right? And and you don't know what what to do. I forgot to give you all a tip last time. You're dealing, you know, if you have difficulty saying no, it's going to be assertiveness training. That's what we talked about. We talked about being more assertive with the exposure therapy. But but here's the goal of lack of transparency. We want to foster honesty. First of all, when you first start off in a relationship, you want to you want to not only ask the person how honest they are, all right? And you also want to assess it. Now there's going to be a few people that's be like, "You know what? I am a bit of a player player from the Himalayas. I'm not ready to settle down." There'll be there'll be there'll be people who are brutally honest, right? There'll be people like some of them are you. Let me be honest with you, brother. I like going out to dinner with you, you know? But I'm not trying to be in a relationship right now. I'm not. I look at me. I'm trying to date a bunch of guys. I just came out of a relationship. I'm trying to have fun. Uh, I just came out of something for five years. I want to see how many cool brothers I can meet. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't want you to think that I'm cheating on you because we go on a second date and you see me on a third date tomorrow. Right? I, I don't want to ever play you. I'm just going to be honest. Right now, I am open dating. I am not looking for a serious relationship. I am just dating, having fun, being open, being honest. That's all I'm doing. I'm having fun and I'm doing me and I don't have to be in a committed relationship at 22, at 42. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, I want to have fun, right? So, but there are other people who would just say they're just going to be, have you ever dated someone that's just going to be everything you need? Whatever you say you need, oh, I do that. You need a foot rub? I took a course in foot rubs. Oh, you need someone to bring money? I always give my woman money. Uh, you need someone to be considerate? Oh, I respect the black man, even if I disagree with him, right? Because black men need to be respected at all times, right? They say all the right, that's right. LaFrance said lie after lie after lie after lie. What you want to do is you want to be aware when they lack accountability. This is what you're looking for. All right, so building honesty Look for a lack of accountability in other areas. So if they can't own that, we're supposed to go at dinner at 2. They show up at 2.10. They say, I never said 2. I never said 2. And you know they did. Okay, that's probably an indication early on they're not going to take responsibility for infidelity. They're not going to take responsibility for spending too much money. They're not going to take responsibility for, for being dishonest and not going to be transparent about what's really going on in their head and heart. They're not going to let you know that they're dealing with depression. Someone said, my man, my ex-man lied about how many children he had. He said, I'm making this up. He said he had two and he had 22, right? Walked in there with a football, full football game going on in the backyard, right? I was like, who are these other kids with your two kids? <laughs> right? So, so, so. You know, we want to make sure that we're looking, you're looking for signs because remember, this is a character trait, right? Accountability and transparency and being honest is a character trait. Being open and honest is one of the top five needs of women, according to a book, His Needs, Her Needs, right? And so just be open and honest that right now I'm not in a good financial position, so we can't go out to eat like that. Oh, okay. But there are a lot of men that don't want to ever say that, and I can see why. Right. And so they just say, we don't have to go out all the time. And they pick a fight and you're like, dang, all I did was ask to go out to the places we usually go out. And you may think it's my fault. Right. Be open and honest. And if you do make a mistake, just say, hey, let me tell you what's going on. All right. I like attention. I like attention. I'm sorry. And when a woman gives me attention, I don't know how to turn away from that. I love you. I care for you. I don't. I don't love this woman. I just like the attention. All right, ladies, can you be honest? Look, I, I'm I'm not at a point where I trust. All right, I'm dating you just to see if I can trust a man, but I low-key think you lying, right? Because I've been hurt. Now, you'll never say that, but that would be beneficial if you'd be open and honest and just say something similar to like, right now, I'd like to keep our relationship casual. You know, as friends, there is some attraction, but I need to work on my trust issues because I don't want to be hostile towards you. I don't want to I don't want to like uh, emasculate you. I don't want to go up one side of you and down the next. And I'm still healing from trauma and a lot of pain. But I feel I'm at a starting point where I can begin to date. So if you're OK, can we casually and slowly progress into a relationship so that a sister can heal? Can you be open and honest? Right. Now, let me tell you what to do. 
All right, because some of y'all in situations where you're like, well, you know, it's brother and sister is not being honest. And, and in order to keep the relationship healthy, I'm going to need them to just be transparent. Or how do you get them to do that? According to the research, it's verification. Verification, right? So I need to verify that what you say matches what I see. See, blind trust failed. So you already lied. You didn't, you didn't either didn't tell me or you went out and did the exact opposite of what you said you were going to do. And so I get it. People make mistakes. But let me see if this was a one time deal um, that you're going to explain to me or if this is just who you are. So I am going to need verification that you are where you say you are. So I do need for a limited amount of time to track your phone. And this is where this is actually OK. I do need to say, if you say you're at work, I need you to share your location. All right, why don't you want to share your location? I don't want anybody checking on me. But when I didn't check on you, you lied. So how am I going to trust you without singing, without any verification? See, if you were a man or a woman of your word, your word would be all the verification that I need. But because your word betrayed me, either your lack of communication or you lie and you misled me, or you keep it inside, I need to see. If you really are done with drugs and alcohol, go ahead and take this Walmart kit and put that PP in the cup. Let me get a hair sample to see how you're doing with your addiction. Because I deserve to know if I'm with someone in a relationship that's struggling with full-blown addiction. All right? If you say you're done with vaping, let me let me check the statements to see what that CVS checkout says you bought. Right? Let me see verification. If if you say that you're not talking to other people, let me go through your phone for a limited amount of time to see that what you say you're doing, you're doing. That way I can see, man, he's not talking to anyone. She's not talking to anyone. I feel foolish going through the phone, but that's exactly what I need based upon who you are. The bank does it. The bank, like, before you close, how many of y'all have it closed on a house or a car, right? They tell you don't buy anything until you close on that, right? Because my credit could be good on Monday and I can go out and buy a Maserati on Friday and mess up the house, right? You can have great credit on Monday and, 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 and will be on the path to ruin it on Friday. You know, credit works in 30-day cycles, y'all. And so the same thing here. Same thing here, right? When I believed who you were, I got fooled. So now I need to see that, hey, this is a one-time deal. This is something that you've overcome. You're getting the help. You know, you stop your addiction. You, you, you had a, you, you're now going to start opening up because you see it caused more damage, keeping things inside. So you're going to be expressive and open, and I need to see it. So you're going to actually come to me and say, hey, today was not a good day in business, and we might have to budget a little bit more, and I can ask what happened. And that way I can see, oh, you're going to be open and honest versus just being mean and making it seem like it's my fault that I won't go to Applebee's, get something to eat. You're going to make it seem like I'm, I want to go to Cheesecake Factory, like, like, like I'm unappreciative of your money. All I want to do is go out to eat, right? You won't be crazy. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right, y'all get it? Y'all get Someone say a period, period. All right, let me do the last one, and then we're going to be good. All right? Let's see which one I'm going to pick, y'all. Let's see which one I'm going to pick. Oh, this is a good one. What if your issue is you feel pressured to change your personal values or beliefs? Right? And you know what I see the most, y'all? I see the most like this happens in marriage and relationships. Where someone says um, marriage is just a piece of paper. Hmm. Marriage is just a piece of paper. What you want to do is you want to have mutual respect and understanding from the very beginning. This is the conversation that needs to be had, right? So I need to know. Let's let's talk. I need to know if we had the same, the same, because let me tell you up front, I don't believe that marriage is a piece of paper. I don't. I believe that that everything that goes along with marriage, we should do. We should have fidelity, all right? We should have communication. We should have dates. I don't want to be married, but separate. I don't want to be that couple that's married 30 years and 27 of them are miserable, right? I, I don't want that. I want to have a marriage where we actually have couples goals. We work on each other's stuff. We have boundaries. I respect what you're doing. You respect what I do. And then we come together and we partner on things. I want to be able to sit down with someone that says, no, if, my, if our marriage is not working, I'm going to put down everything and I'm going to secure our marriage because our marriage is the base of our family, right? 
I need someone to stand on business, quoting T.I. son. I need someone to stand on business that we're going to make sure that our relationship works. Like if we say we're going to communicate on a regular basis, it's not going to be me calling you. You're going to call me too. So let me tell you some things that you should believe in when it comes to personal beliefs you should have in relationships. Like meaning that you and your partner don't agree on these things, you probably shouldn't be dating. Number one, do you believe in mutual satisfaction? Do you believe in mutual satisfaction? What does that mean? Do you believe that we should both equally be happy in a marriage, in a relationship? Like, like if you're a 10 and I'm a four, are you okay with that relationship? Or do you believe that if I'm a four and you're a 10, that some adjustments need to be made, mutual satisfaction? If I'm a 10, you need to be at least an eight, nine, or a 10. If I'm a three, you know, I need to level up and do what I need to do so that I can come to a relationship with some optimism, some hope, some some sunshine, some some ponies and some rainbows and some and, and, and some um, some some fervent prayers for you. I'm not all dark and gloomy. You shouldn't be having to prop me up. You shouldn't be the only optimist. Is this mutually satisfying? Are we both like, man, I'm happy with my husband. I'm happy with my wife. I'm happy with my boyfriend. I'm happy with my girlfriend. This is mutually satisfying. We, we we compete to satisfy one another and we make adjustments when it's not going so well so that we're both able to gain value. We're both high value individuals, right? We're a high value couple for one another. And then number two, all right, are you willing to invest? Like, are you willing to put the time? Like investment requires money, right, Eldon? Is that is that right? It requires money. Like you can't invest with without money. You 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 can't get a better body without time and sacrifice. You can't get a college degree without time, right? Are you willing to invest time in our relationship? Like, are you okay with dating? Do you believe in sitting and talking on the phone? Do you believe in planning what our life is going to look like? Do you believe in allocating time for our marriage on paper on our relationship? That date night's going to be Tuesday. If you're in college, we're going to date. We're going to date when we have a block of time in between class. You're not going to be playing video games, and I'm not going to be hanging out with the homies, the homegirls, when we're supposed to be having our quality time. Are you willing to invest in keeping the feels up, right? The currency of relationship is feelings. If I'm feeling you and you feeling me, we good. We, but we can't be good if we don't spend time because then we don't have any feeling. My feelings are hurt. How are we going to be good with hurt feelings because I have to call you all the time? I, I call you, you text back. What is that? All the time? Come on, man. No, you need to invest the same amount. We need to be equally and mutually invested in making this thing work. Y'all feel me? Making this thing work. All right. And then you need to be the best alternative for me. What does that mean? You need to be the best alternative. Do you believe in being the best spouse for me? Like, can I replace you with another husband and be better than you? Can I replace you with another wife and she treat me better than you? All right. Like, like, do you believe in that? No, 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 no. No one's going to treat my woman better than me. No one's going to treat my boyfriend better than me. No one's going to treat my girlfriend better than I am. Right. Like, like if you believe in those three things, that's straight from the research. Those are the three things that actually keep relationships, keeps people wanting to stay committed. According to Dr. Carol Rustbelt. Y'all, you know, I come with citations in this, in this, uh, Ubla uh, oblongata, y'all, right here, right? I'm I'm giving y'all, I'm giving y'all, all right? Y'all get what I'm saying? These are the three things that you look for, and it makes sense why people want to stay committed. How many of you want to stay committed if you had a partner be like, yo, now I do believe in mutual sacrifice. I mean, in mutual um, um, satisfaction. We're going to both be happy, right? We're going to both be happy too. Yeah, I'm going to invest the same amount as you. It's not always 50-50, but I'm going to be 70-25. And then another season, you're gonna be 75, 25. We're gonna equally invest to make this thing work. And then I'm gonna, it's not gonna be a better alternative than me, right? I'm gonna be the one that's gonna apologize. I'm gonna be the one that gets themselves together. I'm gonna be the one that is thoughtful about your birthday. I'm gonna be the one that sits down and listens to you about your job and not give you any suggestions if you ask me not to. Y'all, y'all feel me? Y'all feel me? So if you do those things, you know, if you do those things, then you're able to have personal values and, and and beliefs, right? These are the things you should talk about up front. I'm gonna give you a couple more questions. One, do you respect a man or woman with different values and opinions? Write that down. 
This is first date question. Second date question. Before someone asks you to be exclusive, to be your man, to be your woman, to be your boo, to be your fiance, be your husband or wife, do you respect a man or woman with different views and values and opinions? I'm not going to be your clone. So if I feel differently about uh, renting or owning, are you open? To, can I have my own opinion without you getting upset? You need someone to say yes and, and demonstrate that through the course of you dating. Number two, do you believe in institutions of marriage? You already do that. Number three, do you believe in fairness and self-sacrifice? If I'm going to sacrifice while you're in nursing school and go hard to hold down the bills, if I want to go back to school or if I want to take a year off work, or if I want to go halftime, can you support me too? Can you equally self-sacrifice? Are you believe? Do you believe in fairness and sacrifice? In relation, these are questions you should ask early on. Do you believe in personal accountability? If you mess up, do you believe in fessing up, or do you believe in covering up? Right. I, this is things I need to know up front. Up front. Now I know people can lie, but I think this is a question that you still have to ask because i think what you're going to see is that you're going to be able to tease out the people and this is one way you can tease it out is that someone's just going to say no and they might give one line but someone that stands on accountability is going to give you a whole dissertation no nah, i believe in accountability because look let me tell you all right if you mess up you need to own it because that's the only way we're going to get better right and, and, and accountability has helped me. That's why I have an accountability partner. That's why I have friends that check me. That's why I already have a married group of men who can hold me accountable to the standards of being successful in marriage. That's why I, I don't hang with my uncles because none of them have successful marriages. So I'm only going to men who have successful marriages to hold me accountable to make sure I'm at least doing my part. So you're going to get a whole dissertation. All right, a woman's going to say, hey, I see all these memes going around Instagram and Facebook about women not being able to accept accountability. That is not me because I can't model. I can't ask for a behavior I'm not willing to model. And I don't want our children to see that. Right. So this stuff, they're going to have a deep conviction about it. Uh, another one is, do you believe in equity in the marriage and relationships? Like, do you believe in equity? Can we be equal partners? Are, are you going to lower it over me? You know, as a man, and you don't even follow God. I mean, can we have equity? Can we have like what the Bible says, mutual submission? There's going to be times we submit one to another. Isn't that logical? How are you going to be more talented than me on everything? That's not real. Sometimes you do need to submit that you do need to change your diet. You do need to submit that we do need to balance these uh, finances to have more balance. We do need to spend more time with our parents. We do need to go to anger management, right? All right. We need to have equity in our marriage. And I need to have a voice. And this is really true um, of, 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 of women, but also men who tend to sometimes attract very powerful and manipulative women. I need to be able to say no without you questioning my masculinity. All right, talking about me being broke. I need to be able to say, no, I don't want to go out to eat without you trying to emasculate me. And then the last one, uh, do you believe in openness and honesty? Like, like, can you be open and honest about where you are? Can you date openly and honest and say, right now, I am working a job for money, but it is not my passion. It is not paying me what I'm worth, right? And I want to do something different. Or do you lie and I find out later that you're not, you just made up a story about what you thought would impress me and you sabotage yourself because I'd rather have the open and honest man who's who holds himself accountable and has an accountability group for how to le le level up. Contrary to popular belief on the social social media in, internet, not every woman, not most women, expects a man to come in making a million dollars and be six six, right with a six pack. And I know, ladies, y'all laughing, but like, no, nah, I don't don't say that. I like it. But y'all know in your rational mind, you don't expect that I'm cool with building a brother, right? And I, and I mean babying him. I'm cool with praying for a brother. I'm cool with listening to a brother's dreams. I'm cool with being your helpmate, being your rib. I'm, I even know sisters that help brothers out with, with school, help brothers out with work, right? Help brothers strategize how to run a boardroom or whatever the case may be. It's just called friendship and partnership and couples go. I'm with all that. All right. And I can build you up, meaning like I can help you to level up because we're talking about these things, you know, and, and I'm praying with you and I'm putting you in rooms that I'm aware of that could be benefit you. And that's mutual. Right. That's mutual. 
I'm, I'm able to do that, right? Can you just be open and honest that you're not where you need to be? Because the system might say you're not where you need to be because you're not with me, all right? Or as a man and say, hey, the reason you're insecure and you're so scary is because you've never dealt with a man who knows how to be composed under pressure and knows how to problem solve. You've been dating men who are were struggling and you had to find a way to pay the bills. You had to find the answers because you were the more, more mature but that's not going to be the case with me, right? You don't need to do that. I can figure things out on my own. So I say, when I tell you don't worry about it, it's going to get handled. I'm going to handle it and handle it well. You can just be in a state of bliss or, 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 or naivete about how the water heater is going to get replaced. You don't know the time. You don't know how much it costs. You don't know how to put it in. It's just going to be in. And don't worry about how we're going to get rid of the water. I know how to do that. Right. So, so do y'all get what I'm saying? You know, someone said, all right, what do you do when your long term uh, boyfriend lies and doesn't reach out for a while uh, just to come back and act like what he did was OK and the trust is broken? Uh, what you do is that you put them through the same process that a bank. They haven't seen you in a while. Y'all did business. You did not pay for that car. That car got foreclosed on. Right. Now, you wouldn't be asking this if you weren't interested in your boyfriend. Right. The bank is always interested in making money. All right. So they go back and they look and they say, all right, when we see you had this foreclosure or this bank bankruptcy on your credit report seven years ago, seven years ago. Hey, cuz seven years ago. I, I but we see since then you've been able to settle that foreclosure. You, you've been able to pay off that apartment. You know, you've been able to settle it. And we see how much you have in the bank and we see your credit score has been reestablished at 750. So we're going to treat you as a current 750. That's what you do. So we don't go back to dating your boyfriend immediately. You, he starts all the way at step one. And I would even say negative. He starts in the negative and having to prove himself before you give your heart to him, right? You need to see versus believe. Seeing is believing. I need to see that you can be faithful as your friend. Because we're not going to be in an exclusive relationship. We're not going to go back together. I don't know who you are, but let's see how you move as my friend. See, if you really want to get back to me, you're the one that hurt me. You should be able to be my friend and not have relationships with any other woman, meaning intimately. I don't mean friends, right? But if you know you can't be friends with a woman, don't even do that. All right? If you're a woman and you're coming back and you're argumentative all the time and you're yelling and screaming and you've never lost an argument in your entire life, I need to see that when we're discussing and we have a difference of opinion, can you show temperance? Can you say, all right, you might have a valid point, right? Can there be integration? Can I have influence on your thoughts and feelings? All right? It just can't be one way. So y'all got it? So y'all got it, man? I, I hope this is, is helpful to y'all, right? I hope y'all help. I mean, you're just catching this. Go right over to YouTube and watch this because I gave you real strategies. I gave you real strategies for how to master trust and boundaries, how to win in love life. Right? We talked about difficulty trusting after past betrayals. I, I get, talked about gradual rebuilding. All right. We talked about feeling smothered by partners over protectiveness. We talked about how to establish and maintain personal space. We talked about struggling with your own feelings of jealousy and insecurity. We talked about self-reflection and assurance. Right. We talked about difficulty staying, saying no all right, and expressing discomfort. We talked about how you can be more assertive and employ that agent to work for you. Right. We talked about you know, what happens when you deal with a, a partner who's not transparent and not open and honest. We, we talked about how to foster honesty and set boundaries. And we also talked about mutual respect and understanding. Right. And the questions that you need to ask upfront and ongoing to make sure that you're in a relationship with someone who has the same values as yourself. All right. So I hope y'all enjoyed that. All right. But make sure uh, if, if you got to the end of this, an end of this, it'd be a shame for you not to subscribe to the YouTube channel, right? Subscribe, click that notification button and then we're good. And then make sure also that you are checking out the course I told you about if you just want to get a, a, a deeper dive, you know, let's go to drchart.com backslash courses and, and check out the course on uh, boundaries, right? And, and winning in relationships, right? And some other goodies out there for you too. So I love y'all. I can't wait to see y'all soon. All right, take care. God bless. And let's go win in our relationships by mastering trust and boundaries. Take care and God bless.